Time for the KSL In-Depth. We've been seeing the headlines from the East Coast for days now. This epic bomb cyclone snowstorm was poised to create a snow hurricane. I mean, here in Utah, we thought this was a bunch of New York hype, but lo and behold... Boston is looking at a record storm surge today. 16 people are dead back east. Flights canceled. Parts of New York and New Jersey are getting crushed by one amazing snowstorm. And joining us live on the KSL Newsline, Wayne Cabot. He's an anchorman on WCBS News Radio in New York City. And I, I guess you spent the morning warning New Yorkers how bad it was going to get. Well, the first thing I said this morning, Jeff, was, uh-oh, it looks like the path has shifted closer to us, meaning it would be about six inches more than all the weathermen were saying. So nobody expected it would be this bad. So a lot of folks ventured out this morning thinking, yeah, this will be okay. And let me tell you, I was one of those who came back in the afternoon and wish I had stayed in one of those overpriced New York hotels because uh, it was, I think, the worst drive I've had in my nearly 40 years of driving. And you and I have been through a lot of these storms together. No doubt this is the worst, not just my experience, but also meteorologically, this is probably the worst storm in, I think, 29 years in terms of how powerful it is, in terms of just, you mentioned the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, the bomb, right? This is a bomb times two in terms of how they define this rapid intensification. It was just insane how fast this thing built. And the, the trouble that's been causing up and down the East Coast is really immeasurable at this point. So much of this we thought was hype. There is apparently real danger at the tail end of this storm, isn't there? Oh, yeah. Sure. We all know about hyping, about snowpocalypse and snowmageddon and snotorious B.I.G. This birth of a bomb, bombogenesis, is the real deal. Long before Twitter came along and exposed it as being the catchphrase of the uh, of the year this goes back to 1980 an mit professor coined it and what he said was that when the pressure drops this rapidly the storm intensifies in a way that you rarely see and now it's been so darn cold maybe not maybe not by utah standards but by new york standards you know high temperatures in the single numbers for days on end that everything that has been washed in by the ocean and the back bays is freezing over solid. So our question here in Utah is about flights heading east. They were canceled today. I understand JFK Airport in New York City has been pounded after a storm of this magnitude. How long does it take to dig 15 million people out? Well, in terms of the airports, it's going to take several days, no doubt, because this is an entire East Coast event, as you know, from Georgia, the busiest airport there in Atlanta, all the way up the East Coast to Boston, every airport in between. People are just passed out, camped out in the most uncomfortable way imaginable. We've all had that experience at airports. That's going to be a long time. And in terms of shoveling out, I mean, it's not going to melt, that's for sure. It's hey. going to be a lot of backbreaking work. Yeah. Did you hear what happened to Cubby today? A friend of ours, mutual radio guy. Did, did you hear no. about it? He went, he went to uh, the North Pole for New Year's Eve with his wife. They decided to go to some Arctic island north of Norway, had a wonderful time. They dog-mushed. They were flying home today. They said they had to clear the snow at Newark, so they circled for 35 minutes. They tried to land, but the crosswinds were too much. So he was able to take off from the North Pole, but he couldn't land in the New York City area. That's how bad your weather is. I wonder which place was worse. Right? Thanks a lot. Wayne Cabot from WCBS News Radio in New York City. KSL News Time 450.